Good evening. This, the 109th meeting of the 71st term of the Baltimore City Council is now called to order. Tonight's invocation will be led by Bishop Gregory A. Dennis of the Kingdom Worship Center. After the invocation, please remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance and those who have cell phones, we ask that you please put them on vibrate or turn them off. Bishop. Kind Father, we thank you so much for an opportunity to lead this people, this great people in this city. We pray right now that you would ask or that you would fill us with wisdom beyond our finite wisdom and that you would give us knowledge and understanding. We also pray that as we lead your people that you would cause us to have hearts that are creative in how to lead these people. We pray that you would cause us to become unified in the efforts that are for the common good. And we also pray, God, that you would give us wisdom which surpasses anything that we've ever had before. And as you give us these things, we'll make sure to give your name glory and honor. And we ask these things in your name. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Bishop Dennis. Thank you. And you sit out there. You're welcome to stay if you want to. I want to thank um, Bishop Dennis for the invocation. Um, the clerk will call the roll of the members. President Young, Scott, Henry, Specter, Middleton, Holton, Welsh, Reisinger, Costello, Stokes, Clark, Mosby, Mr. President, with quorum. Thank you. Today's showcase Baltimore presentation is Wayne Allen of the Phi Beta Sigma Fraternity, Inc. Welcome. Welcome. Uh, greetings on behalf of Phi Beta Sigma Fraternity, Incorporated, Zeta Sigma Chapter, founded in 1922 right here in the city of Baltimore. Um, I'm just here today to tell you a few things about our fraternity and also some of the works that we're doing in Baltimore City currently. Um, Phi Beta Sigma Fraternity Incorporated was founded on January 9th, 1914 in, in uh, Howard University. Um, we have principles, brotherhood, scholarship, and service. And to that end, we have national programs, which is bigger and better business, social action, and education. Um, we have a Sigma Beta, which is our mentorship program for our youth. Um, we also do the VITA program. We build wealth seminars. We have school partnerships with Baltimore City Schools on um, Brims Lane, Hilton, and also Arlington. Um, we participate in movable feasts and be Gaddy each year. Um, we also do March for Babies. And we also started a block party where we give um, school supplies to children when they go back to school. We're in the Waverly community, so therefore, most of it's targeted towards those kids. Um, we do a toy and clothes drive, which we do at our location, which is 2863 Greenmount Avenue in Baltimore, Maryland, where we own our house. <laughs> um, we also do Comcast Cares. We do 300 Men March. And last Saturday, we did voter registration. We were at East Side site, and we actually viewed the new voting machines, and we actually let people in the community come in, touch the new voting machines, and work on them so that when you know election comes up, they would know what to do. Um, this year, we started a capital campaign because even though you know we do have a location, but we feel like we need a larger location. So we started our own capital campaign, and we raised over fifty thousand dollars towards getting us a new location with a goal of one hundred and fifty dollars by the end of the year. So within the first couple of months, we've already raised fifty thousand dollars towards that end. Um, basically, that's the end of my presentation. Is there a question and answer? Or no. All right. Thank you. Okay. We thank you. <laughs> Thank you for all the great work. Thank you for all the great work that you are doing, and we um, encourage you to try to do a little more. Side joke. <laughs> okay, it's the council custom to generalize the invocation. I ask for a motion to generalize prayer. Motion by Councilman Henry, second by Council Vice President Ryan Singer. All those in favor, generalize the prayer, say aye. aye. All opposed, nay. The ayes have it. The motion is adopted. We'll now proceed with the adoption of the journal. Mr. President, the journal of the proceedings from the February 1st City Council meeting is on the council member's desk. The motion approved the journal. Motion by Council McCurran, second by Council uh, Woman Holton. All those in favor of adopting the journal say aye. aye. Those opposed nay. The motion carried the journal is adopted. 
The members can find a communication from the mayor attached to the agenda as Appendix A. Okay. Right uh, the bill signed by the mayor can be found on pages two to five of the agenda. Bills to be introduced. Ordinance 16-0623, Supplementary General Fund Operating Appropriation, Mayor's Office of Human Services, $1,652,000. Ordinance for the purpose of providing a Supplementary General Fund Operating Appropriation and the amount of $1,652,000 to the Mayor's Office of Human Services, Service 895, to provide funding for the following. Men's overflow shelter, low barrier shelter, code blue shelter, vouchers, and providing for a special effective date. Sponsor City Council President on behalf of the administration. This has been assigned to the Budget and Appropriation Committee. Ordinance 16-0624, Supplementary General Fund Operating Appropriation, Mayor's Office of Human Services, $213,000. Ordinance for the purpose of providing a Supplementary General Fund Operating Appropriation in the amount of $213,000 to the Mayor's Office of Human Services, Service 894, to provide funding to create three four-person teams for assertive outreach to individuals who are experiencing homelessness with co-occurring illnesses such as mental health or substance abuse issues and providing for a special effective date. Sponsor City Council President on behalf of the administration. This has been assigned to the Budget and Appropriation Committee. Resolution to be introduced. City Council Resolution 16-0288R, Traffic Camera Revenue for Crossing Guards. Resolution for the purpose of calling on the administration to act to improve the safety of Baltimore school children by dedicating funds from the plant Redeployment of speed and red light cameras by the city to increasing the number of crossing guards working to protect our children. Sponsor Specter, Rice Aaron Costello, Middleton, Curran, Henry, President Young, Kraft, Stokes, Holton, Welsh, Clark, Scott. Chair recognize Councilwoman Specter. Thank you, Mr. President, members of the council. Uh, I appreciate the support uh, for this very important opportunity that we have. Uh, we've all as council people recognize that the red light cameras uh, really are about safety, especially school safety. And we have been sorely missing enough funds huh? to provide that piece of safety that crossing guards yeah. offer. Okay. And we were hoping that with this opportunity, when this through this revenue that we can pick up a revenue source to give us enough funds to supply enough crossing guards and even enough funds for substitute when the regular su uh, school crossing guards are not available. So I'd appreciate very much uh, that uh, the support I've gotten and that we have as early a hearing as we can to find a mechanism that works so that we can create this revenue source. Okay, thank you. This has been assigned to the Budget and Appropriation Committee. City Council Resolution 16-0289R, Request for Federal Action, Instituting Smoke-Free Public Housing. Resolution for the purpose of calling on the Department of Housing and Urban Development to enact the proposed rule instituting smoke-free public housing, requiring each public housing agency administering public housing to implement a smoke-free policy. Sponsor Holton, President Young, Kraft, Middleton, Costello, Scott, Henry, Welsh, Clark, Reisinger. Chair recognize Councilwoman Holton. Thank you, Mr. President, and I thank my colleagues that have signed on as co-sponsors of this bill. Um, you know, as we, foc as we continue to focus on smoking and the dangers of smoking and how it impacts everything of life, which is health, um, this was something that the Secretary of the Department of Housing and Urban Development at the federal level implemented and said we need to put in action. I do know that there are efforts being made in Baltimore City to address this issue, and that's what hearings are for, and I look forward to a productive hearing where we grapple with this issue and how it impacts lives in Baltimore City. Thank you. Thank you. This has been assigned to the Health Committee. <clears throat> City Council <coughs> Resolution 16-0290R, Request for State Action, Restore Local Authority to Enact and Enforce Tobacco Regulations. Resolution for the purpose of calling on the Maryland General Assembly and Governor Hogan to abrogate the Court of Appeals decision in Atlaldis, Altadis, USA Inc. et al. Altaldis, USA Inc. et al. versus Prince George's County, Maryland 431, Maryland 307, and to declare the express intent of the General Assembly to permit local jurisdictions to enact and enforce measures regulating the scale and distribution of tobacco products that are 
at least as stringent as measures enacted in state law. Sponsor Holton, Middleton, Costello, Kraft, Stokes, Scott, Henry Reisinger, Clark, Welsh. Please note Kern, um, Councilman Kern, Councilman Henry, and Councilman Mosby as co-sponsors. Chair recognize Councilwoman Holton. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, this goes back to 2013 on an appeal. This is a level of authority that was available to local jurisdictions prior to the appeal in 2013. This was, you know, it's a classic case of uh, David and Goliath. Uh, of course, it wasn't David that prevailed, it was Goliath that prevailed with this action in stripping local jurisdictions from an authority that they were entitled to have. Um, I think that this is a measure that's important for local jurisdictional authority because what happens in Baltimore City might be critical to Baltimore City and not necessarily so to Wacomico County or Washington County or some other county in Maryland. Um, it was not done with any forethought in terms of the impact it would have at the local level. To that end, this resolution is being introduced to support state legislation to restore local authority. It is being supported by the Department of Health and Mental Hygiene, the Baltimore City Health Department, the Baltimore City Public School System, and those of us here in this body to allow us to govern in the way that we best see fit for our citizens to have a healthy and productive city. It truly is a matter of public health and not just um, something that we're looking at haphazardly. I thank my co-sponsors for signing on. And at this time, Mr. President, Mr. Ke Mr. President, I would like to move for suspension of the you rules. Want to talk first. Can I recognize oh. Councilman Henry first? Sure. Chair, recognize Councilman Henry. Thank, thank you, Mr. President. I just wanted to ask a quick question because I had been talking to the health department last week about trying to get them to do a stricter job of uh, enforcing the law against selling loose cigarettes. And they had made reference to there was some quirky. Is this the same thing? This is a part of it. Okay, all right. This is a part okay. of it to increase enforcement of a lot of things with the bill that was introduced mm -hmm. last year that had to be put on hold because we did not have the authority. I would like to second her motion. <laughs> I didn't make it yet. <laughs> she didn't make it yet. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. President. I'd like to make to move for suspension of the rules for immediate adoption of this resolution. Second by Councilman Henry. All those in favor, suspend the rules for immediate adoption of this resolution. Say aye. aye. Those opposed nay, the motion carried rules suspended. Chair recognize Councilwoman Holton. Thank you, Mr. President. I move for immediate adoption of this resolution. Second by Councilman Henry. All those in favor of adopting resolution 16-029-OR, say aye. aye. Those opposed nay, the motion carried this resolution is adopted. You can find the consent calendar in section A at the back of the agenda. Is that motion to approve the consent count? Motion by Councilwoman Middleton, second by Councilman Kern. All those in favor of approving the consent calendar say aye. aye. Those opposed nay, the motion carried this calendar is approved. We will now move the bills on second reader, Education and Youth Committee. City Council Resolution 16-0. 0280R, investigative hearing, lead paint poisoning and Baltimore's children for the purpose of assessing the status and accelerating the pace of eradicating lead paint poisoning in Baltimore City and Maryland as a whole and working to achieve consensus on the coordinated roles and investments required to spare Baltimore's families and children from another generation of this devastating and preventable disease. To recognize Councilwoman Clark. Thank you, Mr. President, members of the council. We had a very enlightening, useful hearing um, and we were joined by uh, the, our health commissioner, by um, also by um, representatives of Maryland Department of the Environment, our housing department, and obviously our health department, um, and the general public. Talking and and um, Bill Cunningham came from not the one that used to be in this chamber, but one that lives in Remington came. Um, who has been very active in his community and, and just assessing uh, rental house after rental house and realizing that it is um, not lead safe. So basically, you will be seeing legislation coming out of these hearings that is being developed now for your consideration, and you will also see us active working um, on the preventive as well as the enforcement side of this issue. Um, City of Baltimore, both feet in, 
It's time to eradicate lead paint poisoning among our children in Baltimore City. Um, this council can begin that progress toward the end of this plague on our children and our future. Thank you. I'd like to move uh, for adoption of the resolution. Second by Councilman Henry. All in favor of approving this resolution say aye. Aye. Those opposed nay. The motion is approved. This resolution is adopted. Thank you. Thank you. Land Use and Transportation Committee. City Council Bill 15-0543, Plant New Development, Amendment 1, Whitehall Cotton Mill, for the purpose of approving certain amendments to the development plan of the Whitehall Cotton Mill Plant New Development. Chair recognize Vice President Ross Singer. President, uh, the amendment is on my colleague's desk. I move the amendment. <laughs> Second by Councilman Mosby. All those in favor of approving these amendments say aye. aye. Those, those opposed nay. The motion is approved. Chair recognize Councilman. Mr. President, I move the bill favorable as amended. Second by Councilman Mosby. All those in favor of approving these amendments say aye. aye. Those opposed nay. The motion approved this bill is amended. Chair recognize. We amended it. I move the bill favorable as amended. Second by Councilman Mosby. All those in favor of approving this bill say aye. Those opposed nay, the motion is approved. This bill moves to third reader. Karen. Okay. Go ahead. City Council Bill 15-0581. RPP Area 9, exception for 807 Light Street, for the purpose of amending the parking management plan for RPP Area 9 to add an exception to the plan's general permit allotments for dwelling units, correcting related language. Chair recognize Council Vice President Rossing. Mr. President, um, there's an amendment on my colleague's desk uh, from the committee, but however, I ask that my colleagues do not second the motion to, uh, so that we can have a floor amendment uh, be adopted. So I move the amendment. Um, the motion fails for lack of a second. Chair recognize Council uh, Vice President Ryan Singh. Chair recognize Councilman Eric Costello. Thank you, Mr. President. I have a floor amendment, which is on our colleague's desk for the Council's consideration. Second by Councilman Scott. All those in favor of adopting this amendment say aye. aye. All opposed nay. The motion carries. Chair recognize Council. Mr. President, I move the floor amendment. You move the bill as amended. We just did that. Okay. Um, you move the bill as amended. Yeah. I think we seconded it. Yes. I move the bill favorable as amended. Second by Councilman Costello. All those in favor of approving this bill say aye. Aye. Those opposed nay. The motion approved this bill moves to the third reader. Taxation Finance and Economic Development Committee. City Council Bill 15-0585, Tax Credits, Historic Properties, Ordinance for the Purpose of Extending the Period Within Which Applications May Be Accepted for an Historic Improvement Tax Credit, Clarifying the Definition of Eligible Improvements, Restating the Purpose and Goal of this Credit, Modifying Certain Criteria for Credit Limitation Imposed on Development Projects <coughs> that Exceed a Certain Amount in Construction Costs, Modifying Certain Procedures for Adopting Rules and Regulations Governing the Credit, Providing for a Special Effective Date, and generally relating to the property tax credit for improvements, restorations, and rehabilitations to historic properties. Chair recognize Councilman Stokes. Thank you, Mr. President. <coughs> uh, we did hear this bell uh, last uh, week, February 4th. Uh, the bill would extend the date in which applications may accept it for the Baltimore Historic Improvements, Restoration, and Rehabilitations tax credit. New deadline would be February 28, 2021. Mr. Councilman, can you move the mic up closer? I'm sorry, can thank you. And the bill would also increase the current cap uh, which places limitation on the amount of credit available for projects with certain construction costs. The cap would increase from three and a half million to five million. Uh, there is one amendment to the bill which is on the desk. The amendment to the bill would create certain criminal penalties uh, for those who make misuse, uh, misuse rather, uh, the historic tax credit. So Second. I first ask to move the amendment. Second by Councilman Henry. All those in favor of approving these amendments say aye. Those opposed nay, the motion is approved. Members are adopted. Chair recognized. Councilman Stokes. Thank you, Mr. President. I do move the bill favorable as amended. Second by Councilwoman Sp um, Holton. All those in favor of approving this bill say aye. aye. Those opposed nay, the motion approved. This bill moves to third reader. City Council Resolution 15-0271R, informational hearing, making microfinance work for Baltimore. 
for the purpose of calling on microfinance providers, community leaders, and city officials responsible for economic development to appear before the city council to discuss how to make better use of potential of potent how to make better use of the potential presented by international by internationally successful microfinance models to improve low-income community access to much-needed lending and other financial products. Chair, recognize Councilman Stokes. Thank you, Mr. President. Among other things, uh, both uh, Mr. Bill Cole, the Executive Director for uh, the Baltimore Development Corporation, as well as uh, Mr. Terranova, the CFO for BDC, indicated to the program that is the micro um, finance program, lending program at BDC, has a revolving fund. Currently $690,000 has been loaned and uh, $300,000 is available. This is for uh, small loans for small businesses. Uh, here's an interesting uh, fact. Loans for up to $20,000 can be processed within 24 hours and loans above $20,000 can be processed in about 30 days. Uh, the committee at, at, uh, recommends a favorable report on the action. I move, um, I move the bill favorable. Second by Councilwoman Holton. All the favor approving this resolution say aye. aye. Those opposed nay, the motion is approved. This resolution is adopted. There are no bills on third reader. Um, committee announcement. Committee announcement. Chair recognizes Councilwoman Holton. Thank you, Mr. President. The Budget and Appropriations Committee, I move to suspend the rules to announce a hearing. 10-2 and 10-3. Second by Councilman Stokes. All those in favor spending the rules to, hear, to announce a hearing say aye. aye. Those opposed nay, the motion carry. Chair recognize Councilwoman Holt. Thank you, Mr. President. The Budget and Appropriations Committee would like to announce a hearing on City Council Bill 16-623 for Tuesday, February 16th at 4 o'clock p.m. here in Council Chambers for Supplementary General Fund Operating Appropriation, Mayor's Office of Human Services, $1,652,000. Mr. President, I'd like to move to suspend the rules 10-2, 10-3 to announce a hearing. Second by Councilman Costello. All those in favor of suspending the rules to announce a hearing say aye. aye. Those opposed nay. The motion carry. Chair recognize Councilwoman Holton. The Budget and Appropriations Committee will hear City Council Bill 16-624 on Tuesday, February 16th, 4 o'clock p.m. Here in Council Chambers, Supplementary General Fund Operating Appropriation, Mayor's Office of Human Services, $213,000. Uh, the Budget Appropriations Committee will announce, uh, will have a hearing on Tuesday, March 29th, resolution number 15237R, here in Council Chambers at 4 o'clock p.m. to re for the budget oversight hearing for Baltimore City Public Schools. This is a regular budget oversight hearing that we put in place uh, back in 2015, and it is time for them to come before us and shed some insight on what we should expect to um, have come out of the Baltimore City Public School System's budget. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Chair recognize Councilman Stokes. Any more committee announcements over here? Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, taxation, Finance, Economic Development, Bill 15-0562, which has already been announced for Thursday, this Thursday, February 11 at 10 a.m. I just want to mention because of work okay. being done here in the chamber uh, that we will move the hearing this Thursday morning uh, to the Reeves Conference Room, same time, uh, 10 a.m. Thank you. All right, Chair Recognize Vice President Rossing. Mr. Chairman, members of the Council, the Land Use and Transportation Committee We'll hold a hearing with Bill 15-0574 on Wednesday, March the 2nd at 1 p.m. in the Council Chambers. This is a rezoning located at 1430 through 1444 Lawrence Street. The uh, Land Use Committee will also hold a committee voting session in regards to uh, Transform Baltimore, uh, Bill 12-0152. On Friday, Friday, February 12th at uh, 10 a.m., and also the same day, uh, the 12th uh, at 2 p.m. in the Council Chambers. The committee will also hold a voting session on uh, Transform Baltimore on February the 19th at 10 a.m., and also at 2 p.m. in the Council Chambers. The committee will also hold a voting session on uh, Transform Baltimore on Friday, February 26th at 10 a.m. and also at 2 p.m. in the Council Chambers. Uh, 
The committee will also hold a burning session on Transform Baltimore on Friday, March the 4th at 10 a.m. and also at 2 p.m. Um, the committee will hold a voting session on Transform Baltimore on Friday, March the 11th from 10 a.m. to uh, and have another voting session uh, the same day at 2 p.m. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you. Committee announcement. Chair recognize Councilman Kraft. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, the Judiciary and Legislative Investigations Committee is going to reschedule a hearing. Council Bill Number 160615, the Baltimore City Open Data Program, is scheduled for hearing for tomorrow morning. That hearing is canceled and will be rescheduled on Tuesday, March the 8th, 2016, at 9.50 a.m. here in the Council Chambers. The Judiciary and Legislative Investigations Committee will hear Council Bill 150597, Charter Amendment, Subdivision Regulation, Agency Endorsements, on Tuesday, March 8, 2016, at 9.45 a.m. here in the Council Chambers. Mr. President, we're going to reschedule a hearing previously announced for Council Bill 160285R, Informational Hearing response to the January 2016 blizzard. All we're doing is changing the time on this. It was originally scheduled for 9.40 a.m. and at the request of various city agencies, it has been moved back to 10.30 a.m. on Tuesday, March 8, 2016, here in the council chambers. The Judiciary and Legislative Investigations Committee will hear Council Bill 150582, Dangerous Knives, Transfer to or permitting possession, et cetera, by individuals under 21 on Tuesday, March 22nd, 2016, at 10 a.m. here in the Council Chambers. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you. Committee announcements. Regular announcements. Chair recognize Councilman Scott. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, members of the Council, members of the public, listening, I invite everyone out to the second annual Lenny Braxton African American Heritage Month basketball tournament uh, this February 20th and 21st at Heron Run Recreation Center, which is at 5001 St. Clair Lane. Uh, Lenny Braxton was a recreation and parks worker who actually passed away last year in the midst of us planning this tournament. So we have this tournament each year where we showcase some of the better middle school basketball teams in the city, and we want everyone to come out and support. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I have one uh, announcement um, for the council vice president, and that's a moment of silence for Reginald Calhoun, better known as DJ Reggie Reg from 92Q. Calhoun. Mm -hmm. Do you have a good night, Councilman Costello? Mr. President, I ask for a moment of silence for Darius Bradney. Darius was a young man uh, whose life was tragically taken two weeks ago in Pedestal Gardens as a result of an accident with a firearm. Chair recognize Council Vice President Ed Rysink. Hmm. Time I'm, expired, but go ahead. I, I'm, I'm sorry, but... Y'all can is, remain standing. Go ahead. Is, is it true that today is your birthday? Huh? Is it true that today is your birthday? I don't know what Facebook is doing. My birthday is June 26th. Okay. I didn't think... Okay. All right. Because I, I, like, I thought we had celebrated that in warmer don't, don't weather make, in the don't past. Don't make me older than okay. I am. Chair <laughs> recognize <laughs> Council Vice President Rysinger. Everybody, I've been getting emails and phone calls. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, um, no, no birthday gifts, though. <laughs> Mr. President, the next meeting of the City Council will be held on Monday, February 22nd at 5 p.m. in the Council Chambers. And uh, I ask for a moment of silence. And if I mispronounce this or have the wrong name, please interject, Mr. President. Uh, it's DJ Reggie Reg, is that correct? Mm -hmm. uh, also, Callie White and uh, Darius uh, Brosny. It's Nalee White. 
and also Elaine Nelly White. Thank you. There have been no further business to conclude the 109th meeting of the 71st term of Baltimore City Council. Good night.